Hey everybody, Jay Shlansky here from the Fifth Trooper Network. I just want to take a moment to thank you for checking out this show. Did you know that over at thefifthtrooper.com we have tons of other content, including blogs, other podcasts, all kinds of stuff. In addition, if you want access to exclusive content, you can join us on patreon.com slash thefifthtrooper and join at any level and you'll get access to uh, exclusive blog articles, access to our private Discord, and much more. So please, Check us out, and thank you so much for all your support. Welcome to the Legion 99 Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Legion 99. I'm Nick. I'm here with Mike and Rich. We can't see Rich, though. I'm sad about it. I'm, I'm here with I'm here in spirit. It. I promise. You're here in voice and audio, and that's probably where most people listen anyway. Right? And a most uh, a nice uh, upgraded voice, since you know yeah. <laughs> we're trying to ship microphones to our new co-hosts. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, he sounds great. We have we have heard your him. feedback, listeners. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we've got uh cool, we got a bit to talk about here. Uh, it's uh. It's. I'm also trying to adjust to us like not dropping immediately after we record because that was uh, always how we did it. It's so weird. like now we're like recording like days ahead. We're like recording on Monday night, which is strange for me because I'm like, you know, it's past my bedtime. Uh, not not yet, but you know. Uh, no. but yeah, we've got a De- you know Delta Squad preview dropped. Uh, nothing I, else I mean, happened. No, nothing, nothing else happened. Nothing else happened. <laughs> nothing I'm else not, is going to happen. I'm fine. <laughs> This is fine. I've been, uh, you know, okay here. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. I've been uh, painting a lot of stuff that's not Legion because you know they delayed the Clone Commandos and everything, and so uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna talk a. We've got, actually got a pretty good amount of stuff to talk about today. We're gonna very briefly just run through the list of upcoming events. We've got the World's Grand Tournament announcement to uh, chat about. We can talk about Delta Squad. Uh, what makes them good? And we can talk a little bit about the list that we're playing for our upcoming events. And then we're going to do some of the Patreon submission list review. We've got a couple lists to go through and talk about um, what makes them tick, you know, what they're good at and what we think. We're going to do our best to stay constructive today. I mean, there's one there's one subject that we're ta- specifically talking about, and we can just get into it now. Yeah, let's just get it, it out of the way, right? Yep. So y'all probably heard already, but... uh. AMG dropped, uh, you know, they they announced the the little store kit that's coming out, which is great, you know, promos. I'm hoping to have one for a top deck tournament in two weeks, but okay. uh, maybe it's ordered. So if it comes in, we'll have it. Uh, I don't think anybody's gotten their hands on it yet. So uh, anyway, uh, so AMG eff- effectively uh, they changed the competitive official competitive circuit um there's no more store championships with invites um there is no more world open qualifier events they have been replaced by what is called as a gt a grand tournament um and uh there will not be a world there will not be a world championship an official world championship which is heartbreaking it's heartbreaking Um, that an englishman has it and that they're going to keep it in england forever 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 (laughs) The but real forever world champ. Forever. It's they they like literally sad. have stolen everything from us, and now they've even taken our champion. Yeah, that's all right. Their food sucks. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so, uh, but though, so the positive here, there is a positive. There is a silver lining to this. The grand tournament structure, basically anyone that's running any kind of event can apply for it. And it seems to, it seems to be, a kind of blanket over all kinds of events. So it seems like even a store could run a grand tournament. If it had the means to do so, you have to be able to support its idea. Like 32 player is the minimum. Yes. Um, That's the expectation. So if your expectation is, is that you're not going to, you're only going to have 16 people. That is not a grand tournament by any definition of the word. Um, 32 and up. So that that's a lot of events, right? There were, I think, six World Open qualifiers in the U.S. last year. Uh, Nova, Gen Con, LVO, PAX Unplugged. Um, there's a couple more. I mean, Golden Sprue had had invites, right? 
No, no, we, were, no. we, we were offered invites. We deny. We declined them. However, right. That's that's what I'm getting at, right? So basically, like events like Gold Sprue could be a GT, right? Uh, so could Richmond Open next year will almost certainly be a GT, right? Because they're I they, ideally they're going to have 32 plus players. Any event like that. So Iron Weld up north, these smaller events. And I've like, one of the things that like I, when I was with LTC, I was always pushing for like, let's get attention to the smaller events that aren't Nova, that aren't Gen Con, that aren't LVO, that aren't LSO. Uh, that was the other World Open Qualifier LSO. Uh, so that's great that like all of these events now will get to be official events. However, the official events don't feed into something else, which is a bummer. I was I was under I was under the impression because like the store, the store the store tournament kit leaked and it basically replaces the store championship kit and it specifically says it does not contain an invite for any event, other event or anything like that. So we were like, okay, obviously this is going to change things for worlds if we don't have because like you need to have more than six or seven world open qualifiers to have a worlds. So like you need to be able to offer invites to at least 100 200 people to have yeah. something legitimately feel like a world championship right mike you right. Agree otherwise just, otherwise you cut out like the entire midwest yeah yeah you're our, yeah. you're our, like you're our, like lead competitive player here so it, it's like you know you were always chasing them you were always mm -hmm. chasing you know those are the invites i was chasing him too rich got his yeah. early so he didn't need to chase anymore well, he i mean he just came to nova for fun he had his invite already <laughs> year, one, bastard. year one was a chase you know when, when they oh yeah the last world i don't think did you have an invite for like for the uh, first worlds or the so, second worlds uh i had just missed out on them because zach and and butler were stealing invites at that right. time Right. And I got one before COVID because eight players showed up to red caps or seven players showed up to red caps. It was seven because uh, we had to do it. Right. <laughs> and it was like, I wasn't, a, I wasn't by any means like the player. I, I, I was, that was definitely not my peak. Competitive. Did you, you lost your Astromex. You lost the game. I don't I know. What to tell you. Um, so this is, this is a bummer. And I they you know, basically the article outlined that like, it, a lot of it was financially why right and uh, they lost a ton of money paying all these people to fly around and paying for their hotels so i get it i just wish that they had maybe like do the gts let's still have a world championship next year and let it just be an open format like i kind of thought that's where they were going after they released the details for the store champion the store tournament kit i was me and dash has said the same thing in discord it was like this is worlds will probably be an open event and that's fine because it basically kind of already was you know what i mean like you know just make it like a thursday friday saturday main event and then a sunday top cut that would have been fine but uh they didn't do that um yeah the the bummer is that in terms of the announcement worlds was deemed mutually exclusive of this is expensive so we're not doing anything and we went from paying all of the flights to not even having the event and mm -hmm. i don't think that had to be the case like other people have, have said I've, and nick just said you can still host the event just don't pay for the flights it was, it was we'll, definitely a middle ground yeah yeah and the fact that it the the announcement could have kind said of came like off is like hey this was hard yeah. and cost a lot of money and we don't want to do it anymore kind of you feels like have, a kick to the nuts yeah exactly it's like it, not only did they like it's like yeah, it's 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 been tough for me to like uh accept that this is what's happening. It feels kind of like that was like the thing that we had that brought there's... the community like together. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that there's like 90% of Legion players have or 90% of the people who own Legion models have no intention of going to Adepticon. And I get that. But a lot of those players still they still interact with the players that go and they're still part of it. They're still part of that, like larger community, that larger but, competitive community in their stores. Like that, that larger competitive community feeds the casual community. It, it's right. a lot of games are just like that. The more competitive people mm -hmm. will play and, and compete and that inspires other people to play and compete and play and compete and so on and so forth. And it, it definitely sucks that they took away uh, uh, something that we had all considered to 
mean, be meaningful. It meant something that Luke Cook was in his third fucking finals in a row. Excuse my language. It meant something that Ollie from England and, and that's no moon was there representing uh, England with the same list back to back years in a row. You know, that stuff meant something that was cool. There's storylines. Yeah. And one of the things that they mentioned in the in the announcement is that they wanted to make it more of an inclusive event where people felt like or their their goal was to make events more inclusive where people came out for the love of Legion. And like we already had that. Like that's not something that we need to add. And I'm not saying we shouldn't build on it. We should, but we had the chase and we also had the people coming out for it, like you were just talking about. We're not gaining anything here. We're not creating a new carrot of, hey, let's make a better event so that we can draw people out there. We were already doing that on our own. 4K Nolos Dos. Yeah, the community was already putting their own events together. Look at what Nick did for PAX. Look at what Ryan did for Rocky Top. Like th These things right. already happened. Neither of these are AMG events. They now will have some sort of sponsorship, I would imagine, some sort of surprise, prize support. But we The belt of... that Evan made for Golden Sprue. Like, the community in Legion has been the best part of Legion in, in my experience. I've played competitive Magic. I've played uh, oh, I'm still here. Other competitive games, and it it sucks. The community out there can be really toxic and and terrible. And one of the things that has always been something that I've enjoyed about Legion is that it has been welcoming to all new players all of the time, uh, no matter the background. And and it has been a great community to be a part of. And I'm not saying that our community is going to die because of that, because our community is strong. But it just sucks that it doesn't feel... It feels like they took away the support and the love Something was for the taken game. Away from us. And, and they had they didn't have to do that. You know, it, it wouldn't take much for them to name another tournament, the world tournament, and say, hey, you know what, guys? It's an open tournament. You can all go to that. And, and the world champion will be crowned from there. That's not expensive. That's not a cost, you know? Now let's talk about what they are giving us because it would be disingenuous to say they've taken all of this and they're not doing anything in return. So for tournaments that qualify for grand tournaments, they did say that they would be putting the money that was put into travel and those costs into prize support for these events. We don't know what that is yet. Um, I think it's very likely that this is them shipping the prize wall around. Which uh, so I don't think you'll see the prize wall at events that AMG is not physically at. Just that's no fair. Way. No I think way. it may be a better Too way much of saying of a liability. Be, sorry, I think a better yeah. way of phrasing that would have been the awards that are available on the prize wall are what will be sent around. So like I think you'll get packets of dice and the cards and things, Probably. not necessarily the wall itself. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to anticipate that whatever kit they're sending for grand champion grand tournaments for GTs is going to be very close to what you saw at world Open qualifiers like PAX Nova, you know, it's going to look like that. It's going to, it might have more in it. I hope it does it better. If they're saying I hope that it's, it's not just, a right. person, it can't be just cards. I, yeah, I think that that's, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I'm not loving it for sure. Yeah, I, until we see something, right? It's like we until we see it, you know. And for for me, for me, it's they... difficult to be overly positive with like, like I said, like I mentioned a couple casts ago that like I was always planning to come back. I took my hiatus. I was always planning to come back, but like the amount of people that came to me at Worlds and like talked to me and thanked me and asked me when I was coming back, I'm not gonna get that again. Yeah. No. I'm not going to get that. We're not going to get that again. I'm not going to get to see all these people over and over again. You know what I mean? It's that's, that's tough. And it's hard to it's give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, it's hard to give AMG the benefit of the doubt in this one because it feels like they have been really lax with our community, with the game itself. Uh, and, you know, from the rule books on down, it feels a little, a little loose uh, compared to the game as it was when we first got it. Uh and so it, it it sucks because you want to, you want to give them the benefit of the doubt. You want to say they can turn this around. They can make this a, a net positive. The community can get together and make it something equal and maybe they'll get on board again. But it sucks to have it feel like we're, we're they're cheaping out, especially because, you know, 
we've all seen some of the models that they've been releasing lately, having double copies on the Ewoks, having double copies on the Range Troopers. You know, it feels like they're they're giving us a little less than they were, and that sucks. And I know that's not their decision. That's something that comes down from, you know, their shareholders and, and what have you, but right. To be clear, like I don't I don't think this is I don't think this was like the guys working in the office designing the models and designing the units for all of these games in the office in Seattle. I, I don't think this is their decision. I, I don't agree. Not not nah, not based on the interactions that I've had with people. I yeah. you know, and like we just found out like what today about like i i didn't even read the article i was i was just about to bring that up yeah yeah sure you can i didn't read the article because there's probably more stuff that will just make me sad about like uh yeah stay away from it so basically uh as of today which is the 22nd um it is breaking news kind of broken that um the company embracer that owns asmodee the, the shareholder group embracer is splitting essentially into three publicly traded companies and it appears that Asmodee is saddling most of the debt of the company because they are the most successful ones and they're going to make them pay it off. So I don't think this is an AMG decision, as Nick was saying. Um, obviously, they're the ones that have to put their name on the transmissions and the posts. But I like I don't think this is Will and Will saying like, hey, we're shutting this down. I find that incredibly hard to believe. And anyone who's pushing that narrative is probably just trying to make a narrative. Um, this is definitely from the shareholders, and I would be shocked if it's not a part of the new debt settlement that they have. Precisely. Which which sucks. Like Everybody loses here, except for the people who sit at the top and have no idea who we are, what the game even is. What it you means what I mean? to people. It's the suits. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it blows. But that's it. I, I don't know. I don't really have anything else to say. I'm happy that like more smaller events, like, you know, like, uh, like large, even like Rocky tops, huge. It had 60 plus players last year. It's going to have 60 plus players this year with or without AMG support. And now it probably will have AMG support, which is excellent. Deservedly. So um, that it's great for that. It's, but it's like everything else is it sucks for, and that's just, that's it. And it's like, uh, move on. Yep. Uh, I do Other think events. there's a, I do think there is a chance for all of this to grow uh, in the community. You know, when AMG took over, there was a lot of ideas floated about competitive uh, community being in charge of it, just like it is at GW, uh, and it works for them. They they make it work, and so we can too. We just have to work together and and come together as a community. And and put our agreed upon stamp on what, what it is to be transition. Yeah, so one of the events that is going to be coming up is LVO, you know, Las Vegas Open. One of the changes that will be happening to that, and which will probably be live by the time that we record this, uh, is the Las Vegas Open Invitational, which is going to be a um, invite only event held at LVO that you have to qualify for. Uh, we don't know yet how you have to qualify for it in details, but that's, I'm assuming, going to be incoming. And we're going to see how this goes. And I think I do want to point out before people get up in arms across the country, it's not marketed as Worlds. And the organizers have been pretty clear for that. It is an invite tournament that you have to qualify for similar to Worlds, but it is not marketed as Worlds. And... I personally think we should start to call them like North American Grand Championships or something like that. You know, make it clear that it's for this area. But we're going to see a lot of these pop up across the world. And I think we're going to have some growing pains. And we're going to have a year or two of the community needs to figure out what we consider to be valid, what we don't. And people are going to get their feelings hurt. And we're just going to have to talk it out. Um, it's going to take a little bit of practice. And I encourage anyone who has feedback from these events to you know send it to their respective people. Because we're not going to just flip the switch from, you know, August, April 10th of we have a world championship to May 10th and be like, hey, here's our replacement. It's going to take a lot longer than that. I, Maybe even just two days. Maybe. I mean, hey, it works for the Masters. Why can't it work for us? Yeah. I, it took the Masters like over a year and a half to figure out <laughs> what to do with the live and the PGA guys. So like, 
I don't even know what you're talking about, golf. bro. Golf split. I, golf. I know. It's golf. I'm just it's saying, golf. I don't know anything about golf. So you lost me. Well, what I was going to say is if a I multi, love you, bud, but no. If a multi, 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 multi million dollar event can't figure things out overnight, give the Legion community a little bit of time. We'll get there, but it's going to take some time. I've uh, I've asked El- Evan Boris if he would uh, call the Golden Spruce World Champion. Uh, he's got the belt. I'm saying, saying he already got the prize. You know, <laughs> you got the belt. I feel like you should you should parade that thing around. Is he applying for it to be a GT? Uh, he did not say so. I don't I don't know. I probably leaks on cast. What? I don't I don't know. I. <laughs> My my organization, my legion like organizing is at like the hey, come to top deck and play there because that's where I exist now. Speaking of, we have a tournament at top deck on May 4th. It is currently full at 16 players. Oh shit, really? Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had like five or six people register today. Oh, I didn't sign up so, yet. Okay. I had yeah, you did. Did I? Uh-uh. Yeah, yes. <laughs> he looks so there. scared. <laughs> you're on there for sure, bud. <laughs> you're like you're right there. You're you're good. Okay. Uh, you can check. Yeah, I'm looking now as we do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're an adult. Make your own decisions. Uh yeah. No, we're full. Uh, I, I would. The the events manager was basically like when I went to him oh, earlier this I week am. and I said, we're probably going to hit that 16. He's like, well, I want to keep it at 16. So it's currently capped at 16. Uh, if you still want to come. Just sign up on Uplink. We're using that as a wait list. You know, reach out to me in like a week and we'll, but uh, yeah, we're doing, we're also doing like, if you play Unlimited or you play Shatterpoint, we're going to have stuff for that too that day. So you could just come up there and like, just play, play a Star Wars. Uh, Go buy yourself a Star Wars. <laughs> and at Battleground. I mean, I would like to buy some stuff, but it's not out. I'm sorry. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Uh, in in Boston, out, multiple levels out in uh, <laughs> Battleground Saugus, uh, we'll have a tournament on May fifth as well. Uh, also to be signed up on Game Up Link if you haven't signed up for it. Revenge uh, of the fifth, Revenge of the fifth, baby. Uh, and we're also doing Iron Weld tournament uh, June first. Uh, plenty of seats left on that one. If you haven't signed up for it, you should definitely sign up for it. Yeah, that's a legit event. Uh, this is what the fourth year Iron Weld's doing, like a Legion large event, right? Uh, I think it's the third one. Oh, because uh, of COVID. Yeah. Uh, but they've been run the the same fella Henry Jackson has been uh, running Legion tournaments out here in Massachusetts. Uh, he's been doing uh the winter one, winter weld or something, and Iron winter weld, weld as well. I think it's uh. uh... <laughs> uh it's uh ice storm i don't know what it's called. yeah it's it, i it's, do know what it's called but i can't it's an uh, event by uh wicked dicey i i know yeah. that's that's yeah. that's who who run the tournaments up there uh and they've both been really good uh a lot of players come by and and we're hoping that iron world um uh, gets even more than last year if i wasn't that's where you won your invite last year right yeah. that is where i ran this away guy. with my invite for this sure this guy this guy yeah you i think you basically played recover and ran that final game right like you literally ran away with the invite <laughs> hey sometimes sometimes that's what happens i, I was just trying to jog my memory yes yeah. if i wasn't Mike, flying halfway across the world that month i would definitely come play also richmond open if you're down in that area uh they we mike did an excellent interview last episode uh and uh they're putting on a they're putting on an event and it looks like it's going to be great so if you are they are probably still selling tickets for that i assume yeah if you go to our episode last week and go to the last 15 minutes of the segment you can listen to it as well mm-hmm. all the clicks count make sure you listen to the whole cast though so that you can hear me talk about stuff too because i like to talk about stuff as you can yeah. tell that's why i'm here talking about stuff as well um i'm no longer involved but invader league is relaunching as well um they're doing a blitz not involved with stuff isn't it great dude my mental health has been so much better since i dropped il (laughs) god i was miserable that was i i it was fun to put it on and get all the appreciation but organizing that is a nightmare um so they're doing a blitz format to begin with um they're gonna do a it's an alternate format i've never played but from what i understand it is 800 points three by three um and that's gonna run for 
about a month while the actual season comes back up for season 11. And uh, if you check that out, it's on luminousgaming.com slash Invader League for signups now. The website has migrated. Um, so hopefully that goes well. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, check it out on the Discord, but I can no longer help you there. So hooray. One last event. Mike, where are we going this coming weekend? We are going to Scranton Wilkes-Barre area Woo! to a little hotel in the middle of the mountains down the longest He's fucking so highway hill I've too. ever seen. Yeah, I know. But they do have a really nice Wendy's. It's right right next to it. Oh, so. yeah, baby. Yeah. I think I got a soda at that Wendy's. Didn't I? I got in the car with you. I don't know. Someone had to drive me because I was pretty drunk. Oh, who's uh, maybe you drove drunk. I don't know. I didn't um, drive. No, okay. I had to drive home that night. Um, we're going, I don't know what list I'm going to bring, but maybe we'll talk about that. <laughs> I do. I'll talk about it later. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to like, uh, see everybody up there again. Uh, Jay and Evan are going and Stazzy and all the guys up there in that area. I can't wait to see everybody. Yeah. I think Mike is actually TOing the event this time. He is. Yeah. He's getting nervous. Numbers are getting up there. I think he's up to 20 now. Yeah. It's a pretty, like it's going to be players. a pretty, pretty good event. I'm excited. I'm, I'm psyched. Speaking of things that I'm excited about, Rich, do you want to take us through Delta Squad? Oh, yeah. Because we did get the spoiler for Delta. I'll let uh, you guys uh, talk for a while. So it's the unique Clone Commandos uh, Delta Squad. 100 points, uh, two training slots, a gear slot, a grenade slot, a comm slot, and an armament slot. Uh, they have complete the mission, just like the regular uh, Commandos. They have uh, equipped Katarn pad and armor, just like the regular commandos. They have infiltrate. Uh, what they have different from the uh, regular clone commandos is independent recover. They also have recharge one, target two, and shielded one. Uh, they also have a one to two range black black suppressive weapon, uh, black black for their gauntlet vibro blade. Uh, they roll red defense dice, infinite courage, and just one HP. And what did they cost? 100 points, right? 100 large points. Massive did they have fit points. more words on that card? Just a few, right? Dude, <laughs> I don't think they needed to spell out complete the mission on this. You could have just made us look in the RRG. <laughs> I feel like it's the second card with the, that keyword. You should probably just and this card comes in the same pack. It could yeah, have just not I mean, had it, but I, I get, get it. I, I get maybe put it on the back, but like I think, holy like, Christ, this is we're a novel. like the five percent that's like teasing about it, but like everybody else is probably fine with all the word yeah. vibing on the card. It's okay. This looks like a 2024 magic card. Like I need I need some <laughs> I need some background here. Have you, sure, may I show you a shatter point card? <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, let's talk this, Rich. So, like, what what's your initial thoughts here? So, what an interesting unit. Uh, they are cost just at that arc full arc range, uh, and they do a bunch of different interesting things. Um, but most of all, they're a solo team, right? Like, a as of right now, you can only take these guys. You can't take the, any of the other commandos when you take them, right? <laughs> Correct. The way that it is dotted is that the clone commando itself, not the subtitle, is the unique part of the unit. God, uh, it's got to be a mistake. It, it's got to be, be a mistake. mistake. It it's got to be a mistake unless it isn't. And, <laughs> if it's not, I don't know if these guys are seeing the table if, all that if, often. If, if, all that often. I don't know. As a one of, I feel like these guys I, I have have a spot. Uh, What's really interesting about that? You have to be real deliberate with that token placement. You have to know exactly what you want these guys to do every single time you go in with them. Uh, because you have to know when you want to trigger their independent, when you can afford to trigger uh, their target two, when, when these things are going to benefit you the most. And most importantly, because they have infinite courage, you kind of got to be really cagey with them because they're not going to get any extra cover bonuses. Uh, if they're not in, in, in heavy cover, uh, which can be a pretty scary place for a one wound uh, four HP model count, right? That That's real soft. Yeah, and you know, like we've talked about with the other clone commandos, they can't be one shot by a ranged attack because they have the Katarn pattern armor, but they can be two shot. 
Well, you know, it only needs to deal three wounds on the follow through. And if you put your complete the mission token in a spot so that they can get that uh, crit two on offense, um, they're stormtroopers with a three man body. Right. Like, it, and if if you take out a body or two from these guys, are you really all that upset if you don't one shot them? Like, OK, you, you're you're a three model squad. Good luck. That's that's great. You know. Right, like there's not a lot of dice coming back at you either. So even if you do leave them alone, that you, what are they going to do? Trigger or fire support? Yeah, and and these are not the things you want to trigger fire supports with, guys. Uh, not in, not in my estimation. That they're too they're too order hungry. If you're going to give them an order, and because of the lack of sharpshooter, you're not really adding the 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 greatest dice pools together. That's true. They would have to be the starter and have someone else because they'll need the target too. Otherwise, they're going to be kind of whiffy. Yeah. Now, I actually think um, it's assuming they can go, assuming they are solo as written, I think they might be a couple points too expensive. I mean, like maybe five. I think 95 gets them a little bit of protection because you can throw a transponder on for a token when they need it. The, the the problem for me is that at that at that hundred point range, uh, you're you're talking full arc, right? And looking at them versus a full arc, yeah, you you don't have you don't have to use up one of your special force slots, which is good, uh, but you're giving up uh, a bucket of dice, uh, Paris resistance, and a, a pretty uh, versatile unit with the ability to move gain a name, and still shoot. Speaking of Pierce Resistance, I actually just realized they don't have Impervious. I genuinely thought they did until now, but neither of the Commandos have Impervious. Nope. Uh, I'm going to yeah. I'm gonna keep my statement. I think they're about five, maybe ten points too expensive if they're a solo. They're probably too expensive, yeah. I don't now, think they're a solo. I don't think they're a solo. I, I find it unlikely that that was the intention. But... I'm prepared to be around there. It, if it does work out that you can bring three of these, uh, that 25 extra points that you're spending on these guys, uh, it needs to be a deliberate, deliberate choice. That's that's a hefty amount of upgrades in GAR. This needs to be a semi-focus piece. Yeah. If it's a solo. Like, you uh, have to have a strategy for them in place of, this is why I've had them in the army, and this is why it's here. Because they don't support a tactical like full arcs do. And they do have to pay the taunt tax if you want to give them SA. So yeah. if you do want to get them dodges, they're 108 <laughs> points to begin with. That's hilarious to me. That said, <laughs> offensive push on them is a pretty look, uh, wonderful looking upgrade. Uh, that's three aims with a, with an order uh, and, an, and a move. Uh, and then a free recover on the following turn to be able to still move and shoot. Uh, so you, there are some nifty tricks that you can pull with these guys. Um it's just that price point is definitely a thing to look out for because again, 112 points buys you an echo full arc. Yeah. Um, my thing that I'm currently thinking is that they might slot a little bit better into bad batch uh, with some of the cards that bad batch probably uh, brings to the, to the game. They might get a few more shooty allies that they can use and if you're not able to take Echo in the full arc because you're taking them in the bad batch, uh, you know, th these guys sit in a nice spot to provide some extra pairs. Agreed. And they also have a unique opportunity with their infinite courage of you can infiltrate and kind of go for a home uh, intercept point because they can't be suppressed into not scoring. So if you if your opponent leaves one or two soft units back on an intercept, you can kind of spend a couple turns getting to that home point and then know that they need to commit multiple units because they can't just suppress them off. Can't one shot them either. Right. You, if... can't one you can't one shot them and you've got to devote probably more resources than like the naked B1 or the T series that sits back to cap the home point. Because these guys are going to mulch a single soft unit. My fear would be in the current meta uh, that EXD kind of eats these guys alive. Um, and everybody seems real hyped about EXD for good reason. It's it's a good list. It's I, right. yeah. I we'll kind of get to this when we talk about our like future plans prep. But I think EXD is really like rock paper scissors the competitive 
lists. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we'll get we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, what do you think about recharge one, shielded one, independent recover? It's going to be pretty hard to not have a shield token on these guys, isn't it? Uh, it independent recover is a awesome keyword, which is one of the reasons why, like, I don't understand they couldn't add courage four or something. Uh, because at least then, like, it's pseudo infinite courage with with the re free recover that you're going to get when you don't give them an order. Um, it being able to get that shield back on for free every round, or or re up their gun every round that you want to have their gun re up is going to be huge. Uh, I had a, a test game with the commandos. Uh, this past week and not this past week and the weekend before. Uh, and one of the things that I kept running into was I wanted to put orders on other things that needed orders. And I didn't have any to give to my commandos, which meant they were spending a lot of time just recovering when I needed them to also be doing other things. Uh, Are you talking about our test game? Yeah. Yeah. They, once they kind of got out of that first two turns of, shoot and aim they were kind of like ass to the wind and were, they were just too action hungry and uh, the independent uh recover kind of solves that yeah it, it definitely gives them room to be able to pick and choose when you're getting that that recover action to be able to shoot and then move or shoot and aim uh if you've already gave them an order the turn previous any final thoughts on the uh on them what do you think uh, let, you know let's let's end it with a hot take for this section what do you think is going to be their best paired jedi i think it's kenobi <laughs> i think kenobi is probably the both both the clone commandos and the delta squad's best paired guy he he providing that guardian three uh alongside a shield token alongside the katarn armor you're you're really truly uh, going to give these guys the survivability that they need. Um, I think the thing that's probably going to throw people off with these is that they don't need to flip their uh, gun over so they can get into range one to two uh, and still be able to shoot even though they haven't flipped their weapon over, which is pretty right. big. Yeah, yeah, I tend to agree. Uh, and I think just because Kenobi is the guard Jedi where you're taking medics, and I do think these guys are thirsty for a medic. Agreed. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Nick, do you want to talk a little bit about... You've been quiet for the last little bit of time. <laughs> I'm just not a clone. I'm not the clone no, guy. No, I know. Rich is the clone guy. It's a light, it's a light joke. Light joke. Yeah, no, it's fine. Um, I mean, normally I'm like very talkative. So Yeah. Well, you're heartbroken. Just... What can we say? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Only. do you uh do you want to talk about your upcoming scran plans yeah i don't have one <laughs> so so i've like uh, i'm not playing i'm not like i'm not i'm trying not to be quite as competitive as i used to be when i go to events so and when i play in general so i really haven't thought about it yet um <clears throat> i've been playing geon oceans uh i did play an inquisitor list a couple weeks ago but i didn't really like I didn't really like the list itself. Um, it was a uh, who was it? Who did I bring? I brought Din. That's right. It was like yeah. Din. It was Fifth Din, Callus, and both Callus, Seven Sister, couple Shores, couple Mortars. Because I always bring Shores and Mortars because I love them so much. I love them not because they're like very good, because like I just like the way mine look. Mine look so cool. Here, here they are. Look at that. It's like gray. It's not like that. Like that. Tan. Bring the tribe. It's a cool yeah. like Mustafar setup. Yeah. yeah. Bring the tribe. Bring the tribe. Bring the tribe. What, what does that mean? Bright Tree Village. No, All I don't want to bring Bright. All Unless the I way. bring. All right. So here's what I'm thinking. Like, I might bring Inquisitors because like they're the new thing I painted. They're the most recent thing I painted for Legion. So like, but like I have no idea what list I would bring with them, and that's the problem. But like also, I kind of want to bring like a vehicle, like a big heavy, like either an ATST. Or a gas, like an AT, absolutely Black. not, because I don't own one, and no, I do not want to borrow one, because uh, that was that was the follow up to that. You I should bring not... the lat. Bring the lat. I was thinking bring the, the lat. lat. Vader lat. <laughs> <laughs> I just channel my inner Evan. Uh, do, do the Inquisitor lat. Inquisitor lat sounds. 
hot, I guess. I would do Dark Trooper Lat first. Uh, you savage. I would do Dark Trooper Lat. I would do something that wasn't Vader. I would do Dark Trooper Lat because I'm a criminal. <laughs> so the other thing I was you thinking, should be right, in jail. Let's let's rewind. Right, it's twenty April 2024 right now. What were we playing in early 2020, Mike? What were we practicing for? Oh, uh, we were practicing for Worlds. And what were Rest we practicing? Specific? Me, you, and Zach were all going to play like the same thing, basically. Literally the same list. We were playing Rex Saber Tank. So what if I played Cody Saber Tank? I actually think that would be pretty good. I think it would be fun too, it right? Would be fun. So, so Cody's like, a I, lot of fun. Saber's really. Fun. I can't really, I can't really make like a nine activation list. I like comfortably because, like, I want to bring like really. Well, you can, but like, I want to bring all the things on my clones, right? I want to bring like all the clones. So, like, the list I made here, and I just put it together, right? So it's a saber tank with the clone pilot, high energy shells, and a link target array. Because you're bringing Cody, and he's got direct vehicles so that tank's always going to have an order no matter what unless cody dies and then uh, you know you got guess bigger I, problems guess i messed up yeah. <laughs> I, guess I, I'll I, die. Put, I put aggressive tactics on cody because you're always giving out orders and you want sur- surges are good tank doesn't surge so you want surge on your tank you got and i brought a clone commander so direct clone trooper and i brought fives so i get more clone trooper orders you've been talking right? to pat too much I, I know I I I love it. I want to I I fives is great. He's just fives way too good. expensive. They should have never made weed legal in New Jersey. Oh, stop it, Rich! I'm trying to have fun. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Why are you, you're ruining you're ruining the mystique of me? All right, all right. So I all right. Here's the whole list. Let me just yeah, go through the whole list. Got. All right. So this is what I have so far. So saber tank with clone pilot, energy shells, LTA, Cody with aggressive tactics, a clone commander, a phase one with an RPS. And a clone engineer. I might move him to a different squad, the engineer, because the RPS will probably fire support a lot. Uh, does the engineer shoot? Yes, it does. Oh, okay. Right. It might actually uh, be good in the RPS. A DC-15, phase one, because DC-15 is really good. Uh, real good gun. It's pretty affordable. Uh, a phase two with a Z6, because, you know, extra courage, you get an extra surge. If you're getting a Z6 and you have points, put it in a phase one. I also don't have a ton of phase ones anymore. So this is, you know more of a me problem a phase two with fives because courage three is hilarious um also chunky chunky squad uh and r2d2 and c3po it's like 780 it's like uh seven it's, it's like 780 i kind of love it just I, love it's it. not gonna be great and that's not what i'm uh, going for i don't know man you can, I, it you might be good. Good. it's gonna get some good, good matchups good. right because you're gonna have you're gonna have minimum you're gonna have as long as nothing's dead, right? Until something dies, you're gonna have three orders before command guards: saber tank and fives, and another phase one, probably, right? The RPS. You're always gonna have an order. So then it's like whatever command card you play, you just get that many more orders. So you're always gonna trigger four surges for aggressive tactics. Plus you have think... two. Plus you have two on phase twos, so you have five clone surges the whole time. And you can use R two D two and three three PO can like give the saber more aims, right? I have a lot of points here. I might as well put like a turret. I probably put like the the laser turret or something on that thing, and then improvise orders on. Right. Oh, medics. Interesting. Medic. I think. I... Go ahead. Okay. I think that uh, if you got rid of that engineer, I think with R two D two, you don't need that engineer. Uh, I probably don't. It's probably overkill, but the model's cool. Put him into boil. That could be boil. I know well, it could be boil, but this is about the tank. This is the tank life. All right. So Boyle in, in the RPS squad, probably, right? Bo- yeah, probably. Boyle, Boyle helps, RPS. Keep, helps And you put a medic, a medic in the phase one, or do you put a medic in the phase two? Can I just ask a question? Yes. For the memes, how the much memes. does a fives medic phase two cost? A lot. I mean, that's what I'll do, obviously. <laughs> that's obviously what I'll do. Also, because my medic is definitely uh, modeled as a phase two, so it's going to go into phase two. So a fives what, medic what, is one. Is that like hundred and twenty four? It's hundred and fifteen points. I have four more points. I can put a four point upgrade on it. You want to no, put SA on fives? You want no the full... bid? You want the bid? You want the bid? I think I want the four point bid so that I can bid. play a vehicle list, right, or a vehicle uh, objective deck. Honestly, right. uh, fives with a medic is an underratedly 
heavy hitter of a squad. Oh, it's eight. Yeah, it's eight dice when it's full. It's it's, it's eight, eight black dice. dice. It's yeah. it's so it's strong. That essentially gets, surge yeah. hit because you're playing clones. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you the saber tank doesn't need to aim. It's just gonna move into range four at turn one and shoot with its high energy shells. Recover every turn. It's gonna have probably two aims from three PO and link targeting array. It's gonna have a surge from aggressive tactics and veteran clone pilot. It's like. It's kind of like it's kind of stacked. Like hey, I, the more I like, the more I like look at this list, the more I just love it to death. E- Ext don't want none of that tank. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just yeah. I don't yeah, know. we're I, we're gonna talk I, about that in a second. The only thing that makes me sad is I won't be able to roll any of my white shiny dice because <laughs> like none of these. Only I'll just put R two somewhere so that people can shoot him one. Yeah, time don't so you? Can... Oh, oh, the defense does. <laughs> now you're yeah, gonna my, have to yeah. you're gonna have to rally. You have to rally true. once or twice. I yeah. will once or twice. I just won't fire support with this. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, like, so, like, hey, all right. I like, love clothes. <laughs> Republic's the faction I played the least over the last like four years. I basically stopped playing them once COVID started because arcs made me vomit. <laughs> they were so good. Uh, so, yeah. like, I don't know. And I want to play something that I haven't, like, I've never played a saber tank in a tournament. I think I played oh, really? my saber tank in real life, like, once. Yeah, I've never played it. Yeah, you, you got to play this list. Nick, this sounds great. This sounds like a right? play. I'm actually enthusiastic about it, too. I, I, I kind of really like that list. That list sounds I'm actually really enthusiastic good. about it. So it, the list is, now that it's complete, we've made it, it's complete, right? I guess we could do command cards. There aren't a lot of choices here. I right? don't think you have choices. I don't think I take Synchronize Offensive because it's not very good. It doesn't, like, trigger extra orders. I think I take Blast Off and Cody's Dumb One Pip. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> And I take air support, obviously, and I probably take uh, Cody's. Do I take Cody's two pip? I, I don't know. If you're taking boil, I would take it just. <laughs> yeah, I uh, guess because you can guardian. The I just hit take all. I just take all of Cody's cards, and then I take attack of the clones as the last one, right? Yep. So uh, last, attack of the clones and and the yeah. air support. <laughs> I think attack of the clones. Like I have perfect order control. I think everything has an order. <laughs> Eight activations. Because he gives right? out three orders, and you do three directs, and it's like, or you do two directs and a coordinate. And three, it's like I think you one thing, two things are in the bag. So it's like R two and like one, and probably like the clone commander or something. Man, the clone commander can bolster as well. I can get even more search tokens. <laughs> um, and objectives. I probably play like, I probably play KP right. It's definitely KP. Um, probably payload because then I can block somebody with the tank. I can just like put the tank somewhere and they can't go over the. Tank. Well, you also have secret mission. And secret mission is yeah. stellar on payload, especially a blast right? off. I don't, I don't know what the other ones are. <laughs> like, it's, it's probably maybe recover. I think you would probably do. Did you say KP already? I said KP. Sorry if you can hear my dog barking. He's being crazy. I think I played list against this list at Iron World last year. It, now that you're mentioning it, okay. uh, I think, I think uh, Sam McHenry was up here playing that list or a Cody list like that. Yeah, I'll figure out the battle deck. That's not hard. I'll just grab 12 cards and be like, I like the colors on these. <laughs> these Jesus ones have Christ. lots of words. So I'm going to take Jesus. these ones. <laughs> no, I know how to play Legion a little bit, so I'll be all right. But I, I think this is the list I'm bringing, right? Like, right. I'm actually enthusiastic about it. This is the one that I keep, like, I keep making Saber Tank lists, like, this week. Because, like, I think I played Cody one time since he came out. And, like, I've, I, I love I probably Cody. put my actual fun. saber tank on the table like twice. So it's like, yeah, I'll just like, I'll play this. This is, this is fine. This is good. Yeah. All right. Problem solved. Y'all heard it here first, folks. When we drop, when Jay drops this on Friday, you get the inside <laughs> scoop of what I'm playing. This tech week against, right tech against it. Yeah. Bring all the impact. Come kill me. I'm excited. I'm not gonna have a lot of impact, but I'm gonna play Palp Seven Sister. I don't. If I play you, I'm gonna be upset. I don't want to play you. We play Hot. all the time at events. I just don't. I want to play do. somebody else. Hot. Just don't win then. I don't plan to win a lot. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I'm gonna play Palp Seven Sister. It's oh, a yeah. uh, Palp, Palp team with aggressive tactics. Uh, Seven Sister with the usual stuff, push and training, and then I've got two full plate capos with a disruptor. Uh, a shore t21 a storm dlt and a medic a mortar and an irg with protector nice so it's eight, eight pretty beefy activations i've got a medic i've got protector i've got force barrier aggressive tactics and then plague, do plague shit Chef's i consider it a palpless too 
because like I Palp's fun. I haven't put Palp on the table in so long. I actually had to look up if I could pull the strings on uh, (laughs) my eight X and I can your eight (laughs) X. Yeah. So after gonna... hearing this, I might swap that DLT into an HH12. Just for... <laughs> <laughs> That's so rude. Jesus. <laughs> if I had my, a world to qualify for, my, I would, but I don't. My so. surging oh. red safe tank. <laughs> Get away from my surging red safe tank with aggressive tactics and four veteran heels. clone pilot and bolster. The tank's going to have heels. like five green tokens on it all the time. I can't. Wait. Yeah, if I'm shooting your tank, I've already lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, I think like basically like the strategy gets us is like kill anything that's not the tank. Just yeah, ignore the tank. But forever. it's a line of sight blocker, so like I just probably hide ignore everything the behind the tank. I plan to hide everything. I might peek like the RPS out at one guy once in a while, just so that I can like dare a fire support, but probably not. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it's gonna be a good time. I do have a small bid with it, so I've got the chance to play my deck, and uh, I'm just curious to see how it goes. I can't. Originally, range troopers were going to be out close to this, so we were going to be allowed proxies. That's obviously not the case anymore. Um, so I'm going to try the pikes in the place of range troopers and just kind of see how it goes there. Because when they drop, I can just swap out the pikes for them, and it uh, really doesn't change anything. It actually just gets me points. So Excellent. that'll be fun. I warned my uh, locals that I was going to bring the sweatiest list that I could think of to uh, May 5th. Uh but I'm actually looking at that Cody Saber tank list and going, you know, do it man, for that, me. That does look like a lot of fun. <laughs> it looks like fun. It looks like fun. That's all I'm here for. It's fun, especially with Commandos not coming out. Yeah, is that right. still the 16th ish? Yeah, 17th, okay. I think. 17th. Well, yeah, whatever that Friday is. It's like got pushed two weeks. It's fine. It'll be. I right. did. I did get a chance to play a game over the weekend. Oh. Yeah. Like so Saturday, uh, I've been a couple of our locals and I have continued to try to find a counter to EXD. And uh, we kind of alluded to this earlier, but I think you could make a very valid argument that clones, experimental droids, and then the field have kind of formed like a rock, paper, scissors relationship where EXD shits on clones, clones shit on the field, and then the field shits on EXD. And when I say the field, I mean a little bit more of like armor lists. Because one thing that EXE cannot deal with very well is mobile armor. They do halfway decent against Dark Troopers, assuming they can force their saves. But if you run something like T-47s, there are just times where EXD can't handle it because it goes after you and it's got sharpshooter and it hits your underbelly. And outside of the B-2 Haas and the Magna RPS, if you run it, you don't really have any impact whatsoever and you are relying on crits to get through and they don't always turn up. So I did play against a double T-47, double FD, which I found out after the fact was Echo Base Defender Force, and uh, ended up losing on points on KP because I couldn't score, or I couldn't kill enough because of the lack of impact to overweigh Secret Mission. Because the T-47 is just hunted down the B-2s, hunted down the Magna at the start, and the FDs were always in range 5 because I was, you know, a range 3 to range 4 gunline. But I actually Turns thought up. it was a... Go ahead. Turns out EBD is pretty good. Yeah, um, the Echo Base slowed me down for a turn. Uh, I When I saw the list at first, because it's Leia R2, some Vets, some Mark IIs, some FDs, and the uh, T-47s, I thought it was just a Rebel list. And I did not realize until they played the uh, Hold It Any Cost card turn one that it was a uh, an Echo Base Force, because they popped up four range three standbys, and all of a sudden I couldn't take the full shots without getting shot back. So my shields were already flipped by the time that the EXD could actually get into range um, for one of the squads. And I got a little unlucky on turn one. I went 0 for 4 on the, the EXD saves. So I, I medic back two, but that was the entire squad. But uh, the the standby card was actually pretty rough because it took away all of my like alpha strike firepower. EBD can come up with some surprise in turns. Uh, one of the games in Golden Sprue that I lost was against EBD. Uh, it was a Han Han Echo base, and it was really just a little dirty because of all of Han's card tricks and and uh, the Ton squads being able to come on, get in there with with some of the standby shenanigans. Yeah, and it has a bid as well. So I should have gone with the. I've been of the opinion that EXD wants a deeper bid, kind of like a nine to ten point. Um, but I did go with. I've just been running Luke's version since it's obviously pretty strong. And that's only got a one-point bid, and I couldn't keep up with the Echo Base 
uh, deck. You know, I had some deployments I didn't really want. With the with disarray and hemmed in, it was actually a little difficult to to outmaneuver the T forty sevens with their you know double move shoot. It was a good testing experience. I definitely made some positional mistakes. I'm not saying this is like a a lose matchup all the time, but uh, it it way outperformed my expectations. I was impressed. I mean, that's what Ollie did to to beat Cook. Shove those bosses <laughs> down his throat and uh... beep beep. Beep beep. <laughs> beep beep. Here comes the bus. Beep beep. beep, beep. Here comes the bus. Yeah, and like when the magna dropped in two shots from the T forty sevens, I was like, "Well, there goes all of my impact." That wasn't Rip. the B twos. Yeah. Yeah. Rip. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit? Um, one of the things that we're taking over since Fifth Trooper no longer has a podcast called the Fifth Trooper Podcast is the Patreon list review. And I yeah. think we have a couple lists that we wanted to talk about tonight, right? Yeah, we do. And one of them, ironically, is something that Rich has played himself. So we've got firsthand experience into how it actually works. <laughs> That's the yeah. Rebel list, right? <laughs> That's the, the Shadow Collective. Where it's like, hey, it's as much scum as we can fit in here. <laughs> yeah, so um, what, I guess I should probably pull up the patron's name. That would be important. Mm. All right. So our first list we're going to talk about is from... Uh, Username Rastlin. So thank you very much for the submission. We appreciate it. And it is called my favorite name, Shadow Collective at Home. <laughs> <laughs> Which is basically Shadow Collective shove into Rebels. And um Rich, do you have the have list in front of you by any chance? Home. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, uh, would, you, would you like to go through exactly what it is and then we can talk about it? Uh so it's the Pike Capo with underworld connections and portable scanners, the rebel officer with improvised order and portable scanner. Boba Fett with situational awareness and his flame projector. Din with Grogu, it looks like. Uh, situational awareness, Din's flame projector, the Mando Shep Pack, and Din's Ambam rifle. Two squads of the Rebel veterans with CM troopers and situational awareness. Uh, two of the uh, little turret blasters that the veterans come with, MK turrets. Uh, and then two pikes with the disruptor, the capo, and prepared supply. Uh, so just a, a few upgrades are swapped around from the version that uh, I want to local with recently. Um, my pikes didn't have the prepared supplies or Grogu on Din. Uh, Din doesn't have Grogu. Yeah, Din, it's, it's just, it's just, it just shows yeah. the icon. Yeah, so yeah. it doesn't. He doesn't actually have Grogu. Uh, That'd be crazy. <laughs> it would be crazy It'd to be bring a madman. Would I agree, madman, absolute madman. Maybe I'll bring Grogu. <laughs> uh, so, so the portable scanners on the Pike is 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 an interesting choice to me. Uh, firstly, because typically with my Pike, I'm I'm looking for him to use that sex in action to get his own fellows and aim. Um, otherwise, I yeah. I think well, I see why he wants it. You to, can still the give them an aid with aim, and you can just use the portable scanner to give them a dodge instead of adding a suppression onto you. It would keep you from like losing actions. Like you're never going to lose actions with the capo at this point, or like you're probably not going to lose actions with the capo, like because you don't have to aid twice to give them two tokens. Cost six points, so trade off. Uh, you know when I when I was playing uh, my version because. I don't think I actually ever lost an action more than like one time because you, you have a chance to inspire him with the rebel uh, commander, um, which, which gives them a, a good chance for it. Yeah. And since I think we've got a phone call in the background, I'll take over. <laughs> um, the, and arguably the best part about this list is it's battle deck. Um, you know, it doesn't have a bid at the moment. So if you were to consider dropping an upgrade to get a bid, I think, the fact that it's breakthrough, intercept, recover, and KP is really strong. It arguably plays these objectives as well as some of the clones do. Um, because yeah. you've got all of these units with SA, and actually dislodging some of these once the dodges get built up is really difficult to do. I really like the prepared supply on the pikes. That looks really cool. Uh, it gives you another layer to them. Um, it and like you said, what one of the things that I found is that this list throws a whole bucket of dice. Um, you just hope that the saves uh, don't get made because there is no pairs. 
Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit on Boba and Zinn, but they're not really the ones that you want exposed up front. You know, your core are probably the ones that are forming that gun line. You've got a decent range four poke, and then Din and Boba can dive a little bit later. I don't, I don't understand SA on Boba. Can someone un- explain that one to me? I don't because uh, like I, he doesn't I think generate he's... a lot of dodges. Well, he will get dodges from the portable scanners. If if he so chooses, close. Um, yeah. But I I do think it's to play into the you have eight units with SA. That's fair. It's like you blank get everything, so you or, have options. So, I'm sorry, six units with SA. Everything that can take SA has SA. Yes. Yeah. There's four units that just can't take it. So. And if you are playing something like Recover, this does free up Din to go towards other boxes because an SA Boba Fett that does have surge hit defense is pretty tough to get off a box. Oh, yeah. Nandos are really good at, like, holding an objective like that, like boxes or vaps. They're, re- like... they're really good at tanking. Yep. <laughs> Only Slow when up. you need them to. Yes. You can't yes. rely on it, but, you know, yeah. Sloba. It's Sloba Fett because he's slow. Get it? Because he's only speed two. So yeah. Sloba Fett. Would it be Olba Fett? Because he's old. Olba Fett. There's a lot of things you could say. I always There's like to call him Daddy Fett. Fett. Daddy Fett. <laughs> Sir, this is a rated R podcast. Let's keep it there. Oof. Sorry. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> uh, but no, I actually think. Always this... keeping me in line. No, that's not true. <laughs> uh, but I think it's actually a really solid list. Um, we've seen the concept show up in a couple events around, and arguably its worst matchup is the not-at-home version of just the pure pike gun line with Bosk. You know, it doesn't want to see something that generates more dodges than it, but you put a lot of you put a lot of hurt into a lot of things here. You've got impact, you've got critical, you've got bounty. Din flame projector is really, really good. Uh, it shouldn't cost as much as it costs. Yeah, eight's a little high. Eight's too high. Please, please. Yeah, and then the didn't other... just engage on the Ambam. And then the uh, the other list we have is the Dathomir Divas list, which, uh, Nick, do you want to talk about this one since you've played a lot of these units lately? Have I? You have. Not to put you on the spot. Oh, yeah, I have. I have <laughs> played some of those units. Uh, so this is Maul Asajj. I play, I, I mean, Maul's like my favorite. So. Uh, force push, saber throw into the fray, tenacity, Maul. Uh, T series with improv, B1 with a PK, a B1 with an EV and a portable scanner, a B1 with an HQ uplink, and a B1 with an E5S and an Oom series battle droid. You don't see that every day. Um, Asajj has burst of speed, force push, offensive push, and into the fray. Uh, comms relay on the probe droid, good, good, and then a Magna Guard with an RPS SA and a hack comms unit. Um, So it's not something I'm I'm I haven't played this before. Um but so my so uh, the idea here is that like everything's kind of following Maul and Assad around, giving them dodges, supporting them how they can. You have an E5S to pop to pop standbys off to throw a suppression on something, looking for crits and stuff like that. Um there are some like there are some upgrades that are like kind of uh they're kind of uh conflicting with what the units want to do. Like I don't put tenacity on Saber Throw Mall anymore in a world where up close and personal exists for two more points. Um I usually look at like either offensive push or if I have the two points, I put up close and personal on them because the synergy with throwing the lightsaber and giving you a free dodge is pretty amazing. Um I like Burst of Speed Asajj uh, the most. She's a lot of fun. She's just I, like a nuke. Yeah. I do so, think if you're playing so a terrible. Jedi, I do think if you're playing a Jedi these days, you have to have Burst of Speed. Uh, uh, unless you're Anakin or Kenobi. Unless you're running uh, two. And then you probably don't need both. I mean, I feel like if you don't have it on, on Maul, what ends up happening is he either gets left behind uh, because Asajj has needed to run forward, or uh, you know, the, the, you're you're leaving him in positions where he can't actually get there, but she can. That's fair, but he has infiltrate. It, it does require he's usually, he's usually he's usually like advanced position. scouting with infiltrate. Um, he he does have that card, 
or they have that card. So uh, Phantom Menace, like I'm usually like I, I usually don't aggressively infiltrate Maul because like you know if you like infiltrate Maul in someone's deployment zone and then he dies turn one, he's not very useful anymore. Am I right? Uh, but like using it as like an or you know you put him somewhere safe and you just leave him there too long and you, your opponent gets around them and then shoots them and one shots them and then you're sad. Would uh, this be a fire support on a lat? It might be. Yeah, it, yeah, I thought so. Yeah, I'm all hiding behind that lat for too long. Uh, I don't like the hack comms unit on the IG because, like, the RPS IG is usually not – it's usually not, like – it's usually further back. And, like, the, the Magna Guards, unfortunately, can't uh, block for Maul or Asajj. Um, um, yeah, that was I actually going to be my, my biggest – comment is that i think the if you want to go with the hack comms unit i think you go with the whip and yeah just, for sure and then you, it's you just do it it's a three-pronged attack you've got yep. three melee units in there and you can do a ton of damage with those three and then you can put like another upgrade on it too because the whip is a lot cheaper than the yeah, rps 28 it's like right? yeah i think it's like it might even be cheaper than that uh it, it's it's super cheap so then you could put like you could put like tenacity on the 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 magna guard or like uh up close and personal into the phrase real good on them too like if you want them up close like if you want them like in the fight i i like the unit i like the i like it a lot more if you put the uh the whip on the magna guard because then you just like run those three units in and like it's going to take them a while to kill any one unit and then you have the other two that are just going to get in and ruin things um yeah it's another one that has a good battle deck too um, it's pretty good at VAPs because Maul is good at VAPs and Asajj is really fast. Um, it's got key positions. You've got double force push. It's hostage exchange. Hostage might actually be kind of tough. Um, I assume that's why the Oom is there because Maul and Asajj are really good at nuking the other hostage, but you probably need the range to coordinate to actually get your hostage back. And then um, recover the supplies is pretty straightforward as well. You know, double Jedi, Magna Guard, it's really good at that. You've got three one pips if you need to get something back. On hostage here, you just uh you like you said, you infiltrate Maul a little bit and then you can put the, the probes up and the probes can bounce an order to that unit. And you gotta like you're not gonna do eight wounds to it, likely in one shot round two. So it's gonna be able to double move and like get the hostage back at least close enough to where like another B one can grab it later. And mm -hmm. then Maul and Asajj are just going to ruin your your opponent's hostage. Like they're just gonna overpower whatever has it, unless it's like a dark trooper. Unless like you're facing dark troopers and then panic. Well, just start double fair, force pushing I'm it back not, to I'm your not own lie. Speaking from experience, Asajj nukes a solo dark trooper pretty quickly because her one pip just demolishes it. You're probably because you get That's marksman on the you get marksman on the lightsabers. Yeah, she's nasty with like an aim and like four dodges on that one pip. Yeah, <laughs> she's it's, I miss I miss playing her it's so much. Like, yeah, it's like it's like eight crits. It's so gross. It's it's pretty easy to actually get like five crits, six mm -hmm. into a dark trooper with the impact mm -hmm. too. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can you can neuter the squad pretty quickly. I think I one shot uh Pat's Anakin once with a, a, a Saj a nuke. A, a That's Saj. disgusting. That's I disgusting. I, I got a little lucky, but it's like I think I one shot. All right, I did like one wound to him earlier, and then I just like dove in, and I'm like, well, he's gonna be flawed next turn. So he's not gonna have a dodge. So I'm just gonna like charge in now and try and kill him, and it worked. I was like, Ooh. Ahsoka can do something similar. Yeah. So no, I think both of these lists are fun. <laughs> um, both of them have a very clear goal in mind, and uh, that's arguably the biggest part of building a Legion list is it needs yeah. to do something. We were talking about it with Delta Squad. I've Delta been trying like, team. I've been trying weird things with CIS just to avoid taking B ones because like B ones are just so sad right now. If you put heavies on them, they just don't hit as hard as any other heavy core, and they're still going to die fast. And then, like, I mean, if you take them naked, they're not doing anything. Re so Rebel like, Core wishes that they were B one core. They have CMOs still, but they're. To I mean, Rebel Core toast as soon as as soon as like these new releases. Range, range troopers are going to. They're toast. They're, gonna they're, toast. Swallow they're done. Them they're done. A lot. I I made a list. I posted a list the other day in in the uh, Fifth Trooper server. It was because uh, one of the patrons was talking to me about like, oh, you'll have to bring your FDs back. And I'm like, maybe I need to get a third. It was like Cassie and K2, Chewy, three FDs, three commando strike teams. All of the naked rebel troopers had portable or had uh, electro binoculars just to give aims to everything. 
And like, so the FTs just like recover, shoot at every round, and like you just give aims to everything, and like you can just hope that like you can kill them at range five before they get into range four and toast you. I mean, I think you're a pretty happy Empire player if Cassian's taking shots at your range troopers. I oh, Cassian's ideally taking shots at the IRG just to burn it down as fast as possible. Yeah, like, if you the... can get shots on the IRG, that's where you're gonna have to like. You, that's that's how you gotta melt the list out. You just gotta kill the IRGs quickly. But Cassian's not bad in range troopers because he's just shoot, he's just making everything a crit anyway. No, strike it, teams it, are super sad against range troopers because it, of all one. It's it's less because Cassian's bad into them and more because I think that the range troopers are cheap enough that you're feeling okay if that's where Cassian shots are going. Yeah, but that's the game we're gonna be playing. I think right. I think it's like I get that like it's sad that like he's got to shoot at like a seventy point support unit. And like, you know, cause that's the, that's going to be like a big threat, but I think that's just the game that we're going to be playing now is, is like, now we're playing like, we're like, there's legitimate gun lines at range four, like legitimately scary gun lines at range four. Yeah. Like, it's not th- like range four poke. It's like range four murder everything. The the one thing I will say about that is that Cassian is only 90 points now because yeah. Cassian is now, His he's got the free gun. So you feel a little bit better about shooting and chipping down two models a turn of a 75-point unit sure. when you're doing it with your own 90. Except Well, you're, well assuming except, you have K2, then. I was going to say, Cassian, Cassian's 90 points, but K2 is still 85, right? Like, Yeah, I don't, K- think, you're, K- I don't think you're upset about having K2, though. I, I'm never upset about having K2. I love K2. To be clear, because K2 is yeah, like K2's a lot of good. his value comes later on in the rounds when he sneaks up and like punches something with his gun or like hits a vap or grabs a box like late in the game right. like, and they haven't shot him yet. If K2 was, was not tethered to Cassian, you would take him in a yes. large, oh, yeah. way, way larger oh, amount of lists than you see now. So I, I, There are I, other units that would love to have an aim and a dodge every round. It's aim just and dodge different. is good. It's good. Yeah. I, uh, I've i always, I've never subscribed to the K2 is the tax that comes with Cassian. Like Cassian is his own point. You get two, you yeah. get a, you get a really good gun and then you get a really good utility piece and they support each other for a while or the whole game. Like if Ca- like if Cassian and K2 trade, like you, you're probably like taking against like, uh, like a range trooper gun line. Like you, you're realistically like over the course of the game, you're probably taking like almost two like probably about two whole units of range troopers off the table by the end of like all of the shooting if he just stands there and k2 just feeds him aims every round and he just like double crits like you're probably taking almost two whole units of range troopers off the table i think that's a reasonable trade and if you need k2 to do something later like you still have him so but yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I agree don't, with that. I'm as somebody who played Rebels competitively and like doesn't really play competitively anymore. Uh, I'm sad for Rebels because they just like they're just they're taking a hit. Uh, sleeper cell needs to be hot. That sleeper cell better. Yeah, come in whatever. Real yeah, whatever hot. that is, it it's it's gotta it's gotta it's gotta be good. I hope it is. I still love Rebels. He is hoping for some AOE damage. That would be cool. Secret then, mission for everyone. No. Yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. No. <laughs> Do you guys have any uh, any final thoughts before we wrap this the shit show up? <laughs> hey, man, we made we made look. I we made, made I made a saber tank list. I'm yeah, excited no, honestly, to play I, my saber tank list on Saturday. We we covered a large amount of ground this episode. I'll probably play it Thursday too against Chris Lewis. Yeah, you've got a warm up game, right? Yeah, I'm playing. Yeah, I'll probably I'll probably pack it up tomorrow so that that way, like I've committed to it, and then I'll bring it on Thursday so I don't have to like repack my bag for for Saturday. So. That makes sense. Yeah, I have to get the EXD out of my bag and get the Empire units dusted off. I have my little compressed air can that I got to spray on. <laughs> they been on the shelf for a my while. My poor droids. No, I mean Palp. Palp's been on the shelf for a while. I I, I got to dust them off. No, I painted Palp. Yeah, actually, I didn't even probably paint paint him. It's just black, right? You no. just primed him black. No, he's, like, actually oh, he's done. No, he's done. My... Little white, little like skin flesh tone. <laughs> on his face. He's done. That's hey, it. Pop's done. Hey. He's got some purple in his robe. I didn't do uh, it. Oh, who did it? My ex girlfriend. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've never painted my own shit, dude. Come on. <laughs> I thought you I did so far. I, I shouldn't say never. I uh, she painted like half of it. Okay. Did you paint something for Worlds? 
Uh, I put base rings on. Yeah, <laughs> same difference. He got paint out and put paint on him. <laughs> I, put it, I put it on same, base ring, yeah. Same difference. Same totally difference. Counts. That's modeling. Oh, oh yeah. Pa- oh, man. I painted a Sentinel Prime today for MCP. I've heard it's terrible, but I don't care. It looks so cool. It's massive. I know. He's I want a large unit like that in Legion. Uh, the Aqua Droids are apparently huge, so they hopefully look. that comes. We have like ATSTs and stuff. What are you talking about? Yeah, but I want a giant robot. I want Do you want? Like, isn't there like an a ATST beast? is literally a robot? I want another is, giant sort of. robot. I want another giant one. The AT DPT or whatever. Aqua Droid. The Aqua Droid models look cool. I I can't wait to see how like silly they are. I'm very excited. The Crab Droids got me it's really be excited. Over the top. I hope they have like some kind of like mechanic that like lets them fake go underwater or something. Like maybe they can like go underwater teleport. even though there's no water. Yeah, like they can just teleport. Like <laughs> I played the Batman miniatures game once, and like you could like go into sewers and like manholes and shit and come out <laughs> other manholes later. It was really strange. I'm like this is a really strange game. You can kind of do that in Malifo. You can like dig underground. Yeah, that's up. <laughs> All right, I, All right. I we should probably go now. Here. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. No, that's if you stuck around this yeah. long, I had a great time. And, for uh, the Republic. For the Republic. And then I'm going to go record Scoundrels, which I'm recording after this, but is going to drop. You cannot beforehand. spoil my list, Mike. I'm not going to talk it. about this episode. Don't worry. I think they already Jerk. did this shit. So we're good. They already did the world's, the sad, the sad train. I hope so, because I don't want to do this two casts in a row. Oh, yeah, that I actually feel legitimately pretty bad for you. (laughs) (laughs) Have a wonderful night, everybody. Have a good night. Welcome to the Legion 99 Podcast.